Okay, we are going to compute this limit, and notice that this right here is a Riemann sum situation. So, this represents the area under the curve from one number to the other, right? And to do this kind of question, we shall first look for the delta x part, right? Just like my shirt right here. And usually that's a number over n, but we don't have that yet, right? It's okay though, because here we have n to the fifth, and here we have n to the second. So in fact, we can just factor out the n on the bottom, right? Just n to the first power, right? So here, let me write it as the limit. n goes to infinity, and then we still have the sum i goes from 1 to n, but we will factor out the 1 over n here. And have a look. If we factor out the n on the bottom, this will be n to the fourth power, on the top is i to the fourth power, so we can write this as i over n, like this. So you can see, you can see this right here is your input, and then to the fourth power. So that's the function part. And then for this one, same thing, we can factor out the n right here, and we have just i to the first power over n to the first power. So just like this, right? So whenever you do this, Notice that this is our 1 over n, that's the delta x part. And the 1 tells us when you go from one number to the number, this right here, the length has to be 1. So you can go from 0 to 1, you can go from 17 to 18, etc, etc. But you don't have to be too crazy. You should also be paying attention to this part, because this right here is the function part. This right here is the f of xi. So as you can see, we have the input right here already. And xi is just like i over n, so that's your x and that's your x, like that, right? So, in fact, we are pretty much done. This right here is our function, and notice that it doesn't have any like 1 plus whatever, or like 7 plus whatever, so we can just start with 0. That's the easy way to do this kind of question, right? Anyway, right here, what well, function is just x to the fourth power plus x to the first power, that's it. So we're looking for that area under the curve, x to the fourth plus x to the first, from 0 to 1. And of course, we can write this down as an integral first. This represents the integral from 0 to 1. Here we have x to the fourth power plus x, like this. And then the delta x is just the dx part. So this right here represents the area and of course, we can compute the area by using this integral. And now let's go ahead and do this real quick. Add 1 to the power divided by that, we get 1 fifth x to the fifth, and then add 1 then divided by the new power, so we get 1 half x squared. And you don't have to put on a plus c, because this is the definite integral, so you go from 0 to 1. So I will just put it down right here for you guys. First, we have 1 over 5 times 1 to the fifth plus 1 half times 1 to the second. This is the first part, and then minus the second part, it's you plugging zero, so you have one over five. And I know this part is just zero, but I want to show you guys all the work. One half, zero, square, and all the stuff, right? Lastly, of course, this is zero. This right here is one fifth plus one half. Get your common denominator and all the good stuff. You get seven over 10 for your answer. Okay, we are going to compute this limit, and notice that this right here is actually a Riemann sum situation, so it actually represents the area under some curve from a number to the other, right? And when we do this kind of question, we should pay attention to the delta x part first, and that's usually the a number over n. And we do have that, which is this, 1 over n right here, and then we just have to pick out the function part. And this right here is in the expansion, we didn't have the sigma notation like this right here, right? So it depends on how you want to do it. You can, of course, write this down as a sigma notation if you would like. So if you want to do that, this is the limit as n goes to infinity. And this right here is just 1 over n times the square root. And notice that the only thing changing here is just uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on, so on, so on, up to n right here, right? So. We are going to put things together, and this is where the summation is for, and we will use i for the index. It goes from 1 to n, and then we just have the i right here divided by n, like this, right? So based on this, you can clearly see that this right here is our delta x. And the 1 tells us 
when you start and when you end, the length has to be one, right? Because that's like B, o, B minus A over N, and it has to be one. So we know the interval, the length has to be one. And the inside here, you see, we have the I over N already. So this right here is our function, and that's the F of XI. And there's nothing crazy because we don't have like square root of one plus I over N or square root of two plus I over N whatsoever. So the function is just square root of x. Just start it like that. And we'll start it at zero, right? So that's pretty much it. This right here represents the area under square root of x from zero to one. That's it. And we can write it down as the integral from zero to one. And again, square root of x. And we have the dx like this, okay? So now, of course, we can just finish this. And to do that, of course, we use the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two. This right here. Go ahead and find the antiderivative for that, which is root right, 0 to 1, x to the 1 half power first, dx. Add 1 to the power, which is going to give us 3 half, divided by the new power, which is 2 third. So we get the antiderivative being 2 third, x to the 3 half power, like this. And of course, we plug in, plug in, plug in 1, plug in 0. So all in all, this right here is going to give us 2 third times 1 to the 3 half, and then that's the first part, minus the second part, which is 2 third. I know this is 0, but I want to show you guys all the work, right? And we have the 3 over 2 like this. This is 0, this is 1, so the answer is 2 third, and that's it.